In today's video, we're going to be building the cabinet carcasses. We're going to be drilling out the shelf pins. We're going to be installing our spanners, our backs, our bottoms, putting it all together to make an assembled, complete carcass for a cabinet. All right, let's get started. Okay, everybody. So in the previous video, which I hope you guys seen in uh, the first of the cabinet building series that was breaking down the plywood. Today's the second video of the cabinet building series. We're going to be putting it together. So we're going to do some assembly, but we got to do a couple of things first. Um, number one, we got to get our parts. We have to uh, put them in the positions they need to be, the sides, the bottom, the spanners, uh, the back hanging rails, and then we have to cut a groove for the back. We have to cut a back. Then we have to, I'm going to use dominoes to put everything together and then I'm going to tack nail in place with a, um, a stapler, a crown stapler and some glue and screws. But before we do that, I want to dry fit everything together and we also have to cut shelf pins because we're going to have adjustable shelves. So I want you to follow along with me. I thought it was a good opportunity because I wanted to show you guys how to do the adjustable shelf pins. I'm going to be using the LR32 system. That's why these are cut in uh, what's called a balanced panel and that means that these um, side pieces are cut to a size that's divisible by 32 which you'll see why I have to make it divisible by 32 with the LR32 system. A couple of things that we need to do here I have my bottom laid out my sides are standing up so let's start from the first thing we need to start doing is to mark everything up. You could mark inside so just so that you know that that's going to be if you want to, if you're facing the cabinet, this is your inside left, inside left. So now I don't have to mark inside right. I know that's where that's going to be. We also need to mark where the groove is going to go for our um, five millimeter plywood back. You don't want to use a five millimeter bit to make a groove basically for a five millimeter panel because then you're going to have to force fit it in. You're going to have to sand the edges to make it smaller than the five millimeters. So what you're going to have to do is use a six millimeter bit and that'll give you a millimeter of room to slide that panel in. So first thing I'm going to do, we have 18 millimeters, so I'm going to mark in 18 on my tape. I'm using a six millimeter bit. The six millimeters, obviously the half of six is three. So I originally had 18, so I add three and I get 21. So 21 is my center line. So now I have at 21 millimeters, I have a center line for my router bit. Now on my router, I have a center line on the plate on all sides. So using my edge guide, I'm going to line up that center line there so that I can slide my panel in perfectly. Now if that doesn't make sense, it's going to be a lot easier to show you while I demonstrate it. I have an edge guide on my router and I'm going to run it along the side of each one of the panels and I used the micro adjust and I used the center line on the base of the router to line that up exactly with the center line that I made of where I want the center of my bit to be for the quarter inch panel or the five millimeter panel and the hanging rail. So now we're just going to run this along the side, cut all the grooves on all the parts. And I'm going to show you an easy way to set the depth on the router. First thing you're going to do, put it on the workpiece and then you're going to move the turret to the lowest position and you're going to plunge down and then you're going to lock in the router when it's zeroed out. The bit is now touching the workpiece. Now I'm going to plunge in. I want to groove eight millimeters. So I'm using an eight millimeter domino. The thickness of this milk of this domino is eight millimeters. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let the depth stop down and then I'm just going to pull it back up and I'm going to drop it back down between the turret and the depth rod on that eight millimeter domino. And then I'm going to lock that depth rod in place. And now I'm just going to pull out the domino and I'm going to let my cutter up and now when I plunge down I'm going to be plunging eight millimeter into the workpiece. This is 18 millimeter ply so you could go down nine millimeters but since I have eight millimeter dominoes I'm just going to use eight millimeters as the depth. So 
So I cut the side the visible by 32. So I'm working with the LR32 system and I have the LR32 rail with the holes in it. And I'm gonna show you now how I'm gonna drill the shelf pin holes for this with this system using the router and a five millimeter bit for the shelf pins. These are end stops. And the way these work are if you cut a balanced panel, butt one side up against there, and then you press it down, and you can see I have it between the stops now, and there is no movement in there side to side. These are guide stops for the rail system, and the way they work are you set them to 37 millimeters, that's the international standard with the cabinets for the shelf pins, and that will give me the perfect distance when the router is attached with the jig on there. You'll see how that works. I'll demonstrate that. There's a special guide plate and everything. Drop the pins in there. So you tighten those up and you have these pins here and these pins are guide stops that will let you slide the panel, slide the rail back until those contact on both sides. Now once they're hitting on both sides I know that I'm exactly 37 millimeters back from this end panel and then I can take my clamps guide stops because we're locked in place at 37 millimeters back and basically the way this works is it rides on the guide rail and has a pin that drops into the guide rail holes let's find the next hole punch it and just continue on I want to go nine millimeters down so to get that depth I'm taking a five millimeter and a four millimeter domino. And I'm gonna place my system on top of the workpiece, let it find its equilibrium in the hole, and I'm gonna zero out the router. I'm gonna lock it in place. And then I'm gonna loosen my stop on the turret, that's my depth stop. And I'm gonna raise this up and drop it down right there onto the five and the four millimeter domino. I'll lock that in place. Now to find the center of the panel, I have these at 672. So I divide that in half and that's 336. So I look at 336 millimeters here. And so basically this is the center. So I'm gonna mark it with a C there and I'm gonna go three holes above and three holes below. You don't wanna make holes all the way from the top to the bottom because then your panel is gonna look like Swiss cheese. You're wondering how I'm going to know when to stop or when to start. See, there's a little viewing window here. So I just push the lever down with my thumb. And as I go into each one of the holes, you can see there's a pencil mark in my viewing window. So I know exactly which ones stop at. If I go to the next one, there's no pencil mark there. I stop. There's no hole to be drilled. I have the end stops on and it is a balanced panel. All I gotta do is flip piece around. It's gonna be the same process. Put these down here, get my end stops on. Now, the difference is you have a groove in the back, so you don't want to be 37 millimeters away because then your shelf pin holes are going to be too close to the groove for the back. So the pins are going to fall inside the groove this time.
Hey guys, so we got the parts of our cabinet carcass here. We have the bottom, we have our two sides, we drilled our shelf pin holes, we made our groove, and we have our spanners and our nailers on the other side over there. They're out of the way temporarily. Now, to assemble this, it's not just as simple as, hey, I'm just going to screw this thing together in any manner that I want. There's something called shear strength with cabinets. Now, if you look at any cabinets in your house, the bottom and the top, if there is a solid top of the cabinet, like in uppers, these are going to be lowers. So we're only going to have a solid bottom and then the upper part of it's going to have those spanners in there because that's going to have another top on top of that, which is going to give us a support for the upper portion of the built-ins. These are built-in cabinets. So now if you look at your lower cabinets in your house and you look in the top, they don't have a solid top on them because they have a countertop blocking it. So they're going to have spanners also. So what you need to do to give the cabinet shear strength is have your bottom, and in some cases your top like we just talked about, encased between the sides. And what's the reason for that? Okay, so number one, you're going to hide any of the end grain of the plywood. That's number one. Or if you, even if you had solid wood, you wouldn't have the end grain showing through the sides. Okay, so if you had the side of your cabinet on top of the bottom like that, you have the bottom uh, end grain of the side exposed. We don't want that. So that's number one. So there's a couple of functions that this does. The second thing it does is that when you put it together, now I'm going to attach these with dominoes and uh, crown staples to hold it in place, the dominoes to make everything lined up, give it a little bit of uh, extra strength, and then I'm going to put screws in it. We're going to also have a little bit of glue there. But the reason for all of that going in this direction here is the shear strength so that the bottom can take the weight and it has a cross support. If you have this on top of here and screwed in through the bottom, what happens is the weight will pull down on that screw head and eventually will pull the threads out of the um, plywood and it'll just fall right out of the bottom. We're going to put this together. Like I said, I'm going to be using dominoes. If you don't have a domino at this point, you don't have to worry. You don't need to do this with dominoes. I'm just putting it together with dominoes because the accuracy that it's going to give me to keep this lined up flush and completely flush here in the front will make it easier for me later on. Otherwise, if you have a nice flat surface, you line everything up, you put a little bit of glue, you tack it in with some crown staples, and then you can drive your screws in, and then it's permanently attached, and then you're good. So I'm going to just lay this out so that I can make my marks of where the dominoes are going to go. So I'm just going to put these here like this, the way it's supposed to be. Make sure your grooves are to the back. We know that everything is cut exact. For doing this, all I have to do now is give myself just one mark in the middle. It doesn't have to be accurate because I'm going to be using the loose setting in the middle and I'm going to be using the tight setting in the front. So this is just a reference to let me know where I'm going to put the plate. And by using the tight setting on the front with a reference tab on the domino itself, this is going to hook on the end and then I know it's going to be the exact distance from each edge of the plywood. Not to interrupt the workflow here, I clamped the three sides of the carcass down to the bench in the various positions that I need to plunge my mortises for the dominoes. So what I'm going to do is I have it also marked on the top, tight, loose, tight, loose, loose, tight, tight, loose, tight. This way everything matches up and we're ready to plunge. I'm using a 5 by 30 domino and I'm plunging down 15 millimeters into each part um, and I'm going with a 20 millimeter setting. This is 18 millimeter plywood. So the setting on my fence is 20. That will give me roughly the center. You have to do a dry fit to make sure everything came out perfect because you don't want to glue everything up and then you have a problem area and you need to address it. This will also help you in your glue up process. You'll figure out the order of things that you need to do. So I'm just going to lightly fit these here. Okay, now you can see the front's perfectly flush. And you can see in the back, my groove lines up 
perfectly. We already know we marked down that the bottom piece is 805 millimeters. We know that we plunged eight millimeters, if you remember correctly, I plunged down eight millimeters for the group. So eight and eight is 16, but we don't want to make that exact. We don't want to add 805 and 16 and get 821 millimeters because that would make it force right up against the sides, it would be too tight. We want to take off at least one or two millimeters. So what I'll do is instead of making it 821, I'll just simply make it 820. For the height of the back from the bottom, up to the top, 654. We're also going to account for the 8mm groove. Hey guys, so as they say through the magic of television, I cut a back panel here and we're going to install it on the joy fit in the back of the cabinet, right into the grooves. Everything fits perfect, everything's flush. Oh, now we got to break it all down. We got to sand all the panels, get all these marks off. And uh, because it's just veneer plywood, you only need about 120, maybe 150 on this. And you can see in the back, put one of those right in there. And the other one will go up here. Now those are your nailers that are gonna attach to the wall. Once all the panels are sanded, you can just glue everything up and tack nail it in with crown staples and then we can screw it together and cabinets assembled. Do you assemble it, make sure you check corner to corner for square by making sure you get the same measurement on the diagonal. So I'm just going to clamp them together with these spring clamps just to give them a little tension and basically simulate them being screwed together because that's later on how I'm going to do it once it gets installed. After everything is level and plumb in the area they're going to go. As a matter of fact, I'm not going to do this on camera, but since they have a baseboard that we're going around, um, that baseboard cover's got to be removed and only the fins will be there. We still need to let heat out through the bottom. You'll see this during the installation way at the end, but I'm going to be putting um, legs on the bottom of this. They're only going to go um, far back as the baseboard uh, thickness allows me to. And they're going to be just sporadically spaced out so the heat can still escape underneath. We're going to put a baseboard skirt down at the bottom and we're going to cut holes and put vents there. This way the heat can escape. So I needed the total when these were screwed together to be 1,682 millimeters. So I have 841 millimeters from outside to outside. I'm going to measure at the bottom. Keep it exactly I have 1,682 millimeters. So both boxes are equal, 841. All the parts were cut at the same time, and that's the beauty of the repeatability when you use stop blocks and you make all your cuts accurate and square. So these boxes are done, but we still need to make adjustable shelves. And we also need to make face frames and we need to make doors. Okay guys, so this was part two in the cabinet making series. So if you haven't seen part one, go back. I have the playlist set up for cabinet making series. Part one is breaking down all the sheet goods. I want to make the next video about making the shelves because being that this cabinet opening is 805 millimeters or roughly 31 and three quarters inches, we don't want any sag on the shelf. Now in the middle of the shelf, you can put a center partition and that will give you support for the shelf and then it definitely won't sag but, um, because there'll be shorter runs. But 
I wasn't doing that here because this is just going to hold clothes. So it's going gonna, it's, it's gonna to be holding shirts, sweatshirts, uh, pants, things like that. So the shelf's not going to take a lot of weight. What I'm going to do is still to combat, you know, sagging over time just from the weight of the plywood itself and the warpage. We're going to edge band that with solid wood. Definitely stay tuned for that. That's going to be the next episode. I'll show you how to trim the edge banding. I hope you guys learned a lot from this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and make sure you hit that subscribe button and definitely hit that picture of a notification bell. That's going to notify you every time I upload a video. And I will see you in the next part of this series, which is going to be making the adjustable shelves. All right, guys, thanks for joining me in my shot today. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time.